In 1900, we'd had a civil war, of course, before, and there's a, war always causes debts and everything. The national debt was $28 and change. It hadn't even doubled in 100 years. Well, in 1913, we changed the way we elected senators. So now they represent the people, like the House does. We changed that critically important dynamic. Now senators get elected the same way the House of Representatives always has. Senators go out and say, what do you want? You got it if you got me. What do you want? Oh, big thumbs up on that one. You get me in office, I promise you, that will be in my next bill. And they go across their state in that similar manner. 17th Amendment called, uh, called for this, by the way. And they get elected based upon promises made. And, of course, the Federal Reserve came into effect at that time, too. So they've got a bank that never says no and will print money out of thin air. And we've got absolute proof of that. That's how they create money. If the Congress comes to them and says, oh, golly, guys, we didn't have enough money. We don't want to raise taxes that much. So why don't you print us off another trillion dollars? Sure enough, we can do that. And that's what's been happening since 1913. The per capita debt now is $42,000, every man, woman, and child. It was $28 in 1900, so 100 years later. Do the math. How many times do we have to understand this is wrong? Now, i got to tell you, in running for Senate, I have literally been contacted by people that say, if you are elected, what will you give me? They want me to pay for their vote. And I'll tell you what I tell them. I will give you the opportunity to be free. And you can make whatever you want out of your life. And uh, for most people, that's not good enough. It's really funny. They don't care enough about really what they can do on their own. They don't care enough about these little people that are running around here. Because the debt that we're spending now is going to come on their shoulders. It's tragic. It really, truly is. Well, this fundamental change can be turned around. We have had a success formula placed upon us that the Founding Fathers, under divine inspiration, came up with. Yeah, they had a lot of experience. Yeah, they were able to look at those that went before, the Montesquieu's and the Blackstones and the Locks and so on. But a lot of other people have had those too. But they testified to the fact that while they were there in that convention, they felt the hand of God upon them. And they are, were astounded at the what came together. And then right after the nation was started, in fact, the 3rd of October is when Washington wrote this at the behest of the Congress, which had just passed the, the Bill of Rights on the 25th of, of September in 1789. They, the Congress, asked George Washington to send out a proclamation of fasting and prayer for the entire nation, recognizing the hand of God in the establishment of this nation. That's what this was. It was so amazing. It was astounding. And before that time, they had been just on the verge of destruction. The entire nation had been falling apart. Europe had been standing in the wings, waiting for the, these upstart colonies to unravel to the point that they could swoop in and grab them again, and Europe would again have a toehold in North America. Debt was rampant, political wrangling, economic challenges between the states. I mean, we could go on and on and on. But as soon as they adopted that constitution and vigorously, passionately applied the principles that were found in that constitution, a miracle occurred in this nation, a literal miracle. The nation stood up and became the United States that became kind of if you will, the beacon of hope for the entire world. A light on the, on the hill. Other nations could look at this nation and say, see, it could be done. And we have fallen from that status as we have abandoned the Constitution of the United States. The same principles apply. 
They're timeless. They have nothing whatsoever to do with technology or how much money's in the economy or anything else like that. It has everything to do with human nature. And human nature is to obtain and then begin to abuse power. And that has been going on for so long in this nation that we need to turn it around. And once we do, the problem is not with the Constitution, as some people would have you believe. Some people say they love it, but it's flawed. It needs to be changed. My belief is the flaw is in the fact that we have ceased to apply it. Once we begin to apply it again, again, this nation will become vigorous and strong. It'll be active and brave. It'll be prosperous. It'll be the envy of the world again. It'll be something that we aren't the ugly American anymore. We are a land of the free and the home of the brave. And they're the, it's a land that people will look up to and say, we can do that in our land too. That's what we should be. Well, as we began, we said that there's a, there is a war going on for the soul of this nation. And what I'm doing is not about me. It's about the principles. It's about a restoration. I'm not running for anything but a restoration. And that's what this nation needs so desperately, is a, de is a restoration, not a revolution. We have the principles. We just need to begin to apply them. And if you don't care enough about them for yourself, care for your children, your grandchildren, generations yet unborn. Because if we lose what we have had for the last 223 years, it will be a desperate struggle to recur it, to, re to recreate it, to bring it back into existence. We cannot let it slip through our fingers. And as I said, this is a time when I have I've prayed for it literally, my entire life, for Americans to begin to understand that they need to take part in this. And it's wonderful. The danger is that they can be co-opted. They can be caused to be distracted, diverted, and even brought along another path, sometimes by those that helped put us in this mess. And believe me, there are plenty of those. We've had plenty of talk recently from some that have said they're probably going to run for president in the, in the coming years. And we could name names if you wanted to talk about it later, but I should probably close now. But please, understand, this is a plea for our freedom. It's about our freedom. It's about generations unborn's freedom. And we, it's up to us to preserve it.